amen and amen. Your time is valuable. We thank the Lord for you being here. Won't you stand with us all over the house? As we're now in the second week of this year, can't we truly say God has been gracious to us and kind? I pray that as you are in your time of fasting, that you find that you can bring this body under subjection, that your soul man is being refined and redefined, that your spirit man is being strengthened, and that your heart and your mind is being focused on one desire, that is to please the Lord, to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And so this morning, I want you to join with me as we declare, if you can use anything, oh God, you can use me. If you can use, if you can use anything, Lord, Father, we come this morning declaring that if you can use, Father, I ask that you take my hands. Touch my heart, oh God. If you can use anything. Come on, lift your hands all over the house and declare. If you can use anything, Lord. Father, I thank you this morning. I stretch my hands to thee and I say, if you can use anything. Father, I ask that you just take my hands, oh God. Touch my heart, oh God. If you can use anything. Come on one more time. Focus your heart and your mind. If you can use anything, oh God, if you can use. Father, I thank you that you've let me see another year. If you can use. Father, I pray you sanctify my hands, Lord. Why don't we take my hands, oh God? Touch my heart. Touch my heart. Take my hand, oh God. Take my hand, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, oh God. Touch my heart, Lord, speak. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. My hand, Lord, and no my feet. other help I know, God. Anything, oh God, you can use me. Father, if you can use anything, oh God, hallelujah. Well, why don't you put those hands together for just a moment? Why don't you lift your voice like a trumpet and say, Father, it's your breath in my lungs and I pour it out to you. I give you the praise. I give you the glory. I give you the honor. Hallelujah. Look over at your neighbor across the way. Give him a little chicken wing and say, every day is a good day to give thanks unto the Lord. Every day is a good day to give praise unto the Lord. Every day is a good day to give thanks unto the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, he brought me from last week to this week. I'm going to give him praise. I'm going to give him glory. I'm going to give him honor. I'm going to give him glory. I'm going to give him honor. I'm going to give him glory. I'm going to give him honor. I'm going to give him glory. I'm going to give him honor. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I command my mind. I command my body. I command my spirit to get in line. I feel you, Jesus. I feel you. I feel you. Somebody got a load. You got to get off of you this morning. Look at your neighbor and say, this is a good day to get that off of you. This is a good day to get that off of you. This is a good day to get that off of you. Woo! God, I hear you. Woo! I hear you, Holy Ghost. I hear you, Holy Ghost. My, 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 my. Somebody say, I will. Bless the Lord. Say, I will. 
Bless the Lord. Come on, put those hands together one more time. Come on, put those hands together one more time. Come on, redeem saints. I feel you. Ah, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Woo! Listen, folks, I feel the shifting in my soul. But we're going to have the McGurks come with our prayer and scripture praise team. I want you to, I don't know what the Holy Ghost put in y'all, but I feel a shifting in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. I feel it. In, I don't know if y'all feeling that. I'm not trying to work up something, but I'm telling us I need somebody to go in. Look at your name and say, let's go on in. Uh-huh, let's go in. Let's go on into the presence of the Lord. Let's go in with the feast of the Lord has already been prepared today, I promise you. I don't know who you are, but you ain't got to stay with it on you like that. The Lord can free you this day. And whom the sun sets free is what? Say it again. Whom the sun sets free is what? I don't know who that's for. Whom the sun sets free is what? Come on, my girl. Y'all pray and lead them on in. Turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom for his mouth from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk, who walk is blameless. For he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand what is right and just and fair, every good path. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will protect you, and understanding will guard you. Wisdom will save you from the ways of the wicked men, from men whose words are perverse. So that's today's reading, and may God bless the readings and the hearers and doers of his word. Father God, thank you. Thank, thank you, Lord God. We only just realized the answers are just a, just above our heads. If we just keep looking up, my God, my God, we will be saved and set free. Don't let the wickedness of this world keep you from looking up. It's above your head, church. It's above our head, church. It's above our head. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can I just get five people to believe that today? Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. God, you are everything, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. We could come with nothing and leave with everything, oh God. Hallelujah. You the only God that can supply every need. Hallelujah, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. We bless you in this moment, oh God. We wouldn't be able to have this space without you, oh God. We wouldn't be able to have the mind we have, the heart we have, oh God, the desires we have, the gifts and talents we have without you, oh God. Thank you, oh God. Hallelujah, God. We give it all to you, oh God. You get the glory, oh God. You get the praise, oh God. You get everything and anything that is us, oh God. You have birthed us, oh God. You have walked with us, oh God, when we have felt like we was by ourselves, oh God. We thank you in this moment, oh God. Keep the doors open in this space, oh God, for every man, every woman, every child to know, oh God, they are wonderfully made, oh God. Hallelujah, oh God, that they could be changed and set free. Free, oh God, hallelujah, oh God. We will touch them in this moment, oh God. We will stand with them in this moment, oh God. Hallelujah, God. We will scream, we will yell in this moment, oh God. We will celebrate in this moment with you, oh God. Hallelujah, oh God. Thank you, thank you, oh God. Our homes will be saved, oh God. Community will be saved, oh God. In this moment, we will come together, oh God. We will fight together, oh God. Hallelujah, oh God. 
God. We thank you, God. Thank you for the word today, oh God. Let it change us. Let it save us, oh God. Hallelujah, oh God, because you are a saver, oh God. You are a change maker, oh God. Bless the speaker, oh God. Bless who speaks, Father, oh God. Let it be a loving and kind of word, oh God. Hallelujah, oh God. We thank you and we praise you, oh God. Amen. Lord, we bless you. We give you honor. We give you thanks. God, this is the day that you have made. We're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad in it. Hallelujah. God, we thank you, oh God. Bishop said that some of us came in here burdened down. This is a good day to release that. This is a good day to get that off of you. Why? Because our God reigns. He reigns over every circumstance. Hallelujah. He reigns over every situation. He reigns over our life. He reigns over our family. He reigns over our finances. He reigns over every single thing if you allow him. Hallelujah. If you allow him today, he can reign. He can rule over every situation, over every circumstance. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Release the praise to your Father. Release the praise to your Father. Give him glory. And give him glory today. Hallelujah. God, we honor you. I'm not going to move until we're on a one accord. We give you glory, Lord. We honor you, Lord. For you are holy, God. Hey, you are worthy, God. Oh, we glorify you, Lord. Oh Lord, you reign. Yeah, oh my God, reign. Oh my God, reign. Oh Lord, you reign. With power and majesty. Dominion. Oh yeah, with power and majesty. Yeah. Dominion. We're going to stay right there. Oh, my God, my God, oh, my God, my God, oh, Lord, you reign. Yeah, 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 my God, my God, oh, my God, my God, oh, Lord, you reign. With power and majesty,
with power and majesty. Yeah. because everything is going to be all right. Everything is all right. It's already all right. Already done. Already done. Oh, my God. Anybody got a praise to God? Yes, sir. I think it's, it's, it's already done. Healing, hey, way made. 
Lift it, burn it. Lift it, burn it. Hey, my freedom. Come on, anybody believe it? My freedom. Hey, my freedom. Your freedom. Your deliverance. Way, baby. It's, I said it's already done and so when someone does something for you you turn around and tell him what It's already done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your voices and give it praise because it's already done. A thanksgiving praise. We just want to thank you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for us, Father. We know it's already done. So we celebrate in advance. Come on. We give you an advance praise. You kept us all week long. This is your moment. You don't miss it. Go ahead and tell him what you're thankful for. You kept us all week long. We're grateful. Hallelujah. We thank you for your very presence. How you let angels be encamped around about. Come on, tell him what he did for you. I can't tell him because I wasn't with you all week. Hallelujah. God, you made that way. You touched us with your hand of mercy. Hallelujah. You didn't let the enemy, hallelujah, have his way with me. My family, my children, hallelujah. You were, hallelujah, my source. And therefore you cause resources to come into, hallelujah. You even cause men to give unto my bosom to bless me. God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God, the very breath we breathe, hallelujah. It's your breath that's in our lungs, hallelujah. So we pour out our praise today, hallelujah. We say thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, you give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Say you give life. Come on. You give life. Say you are love. You, are love. you bring light, you bring light to, the to the darkness. You give hope. You restore, you restore every heart. Every heart that's it. Love. Say great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Sing it again. You give life. You are, you are love. You bring light, bring light to, the to the darkness. You give hope. You restore. You are love. You are love. You bring light. Sing radiant. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great. Come on, everybody. You light. You are love. It's your breath. 
present God. Yes, Lord. And he's powerful right yes, where you yes. are this morning. And I tell you, yes, I felt a shift in my spirit yes, early in this yes, service Lord. that you don't have to be bound because yes, you serve a great God. God. Why should I be bound when Christ has made me free? Made me free. And whom the Son has set free is free indeed. He is a chain breaker. He is a mind regulator. He's a hard fixer. I know people have hurt you. I know circumstances have hurt you. But I'm here to let you know God is the restorer of those who are bruised. He will put you back together again. Great are you, Lord. 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 Receive your healing this morning. Great are you, Lord. Oh, great are you, Lord. Oh, God. Hallelujah. I'm a friend of God. I'm a great and mighty God. He's worthy of all the glory. And he's all powerful, oh God. Father, we give you a great praise. Because you are the great God. Yes. Besides you, there is no other. Father, I felt the shifting in my spirit. Yes, God. Whether someone in this place, someone watching online. Come on. Father, I pray now that you would overshadow them with freedom. Yes. To let them know that if they would give it all over to you. Yes. Ah, and I know, I know this ain't this ain't theology trick, but Bob Marley says, don't worry about a thing. About Every thing. little thing gonna be all right. All right. And I don't know who got a, a little thing that's bothering you, but God said to me, that's a little thing. But everything going to be all right. I feel that in my sanctified soul. Listen, the Holy Ghost is trying to tell you everything going to be all right. And can I tell you something? When God is working it out, you ain't got to worry about it. So, Father, will you work it out? Work it out, God. Will you confirm that their presence has released a promise? Hallelujah. Their presence has released your power. And they will testify that, Bishop, Hill, that was not just a random feeling you had. But that was a kingdom announcement that God is moving in the earth realm. So, Father, I pray now that you touch them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Father, we pray for every doctor, every nurse battling COVID. Every day, every day. We pray now, God, you give them wisdom and understanding. Yes, Lord. And, God, we pray for family members, oh, God, whether it be Delta, whether it be 19, whether it be Omicron, we put it under the blood right now. Father, I pray now that you would help them to realize that if they continue to look unto you, the author and the finisher of their faith, that you were wounded for our transgressions, you were bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon you, and by your stripes we are healed. We call healing now. We claim healing now. 
we receive healing now in the name of Jesus. Father, I've come against that spirit of depression that's trying to oppress even the saints of God. Father, I thank you, God, that you are a mind regulator. My mind is working fine. I'm thinking on the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. My mind is remembering that he brought me out of that so he'll bring me out of this. Ah, my mind is reminded that this morning he gave me a brand new mercy. So, Father, will you saturate their mind? Will you help them to bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ? We can take every random foolish thought and we bring it under subjection now. I am safe. I am sane. I shall live and testify of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. My family is blessed. My offspring is blessed. My house is blessed. Everywhere I put my feet is blessed. What my leaf shall not wither and whatsoever I do it shall prosper. Hallelujah. I ask you now, God, that you continue to let these poor teachers know, oh God, that you're watching over. And I pray for every teacher. I pray, oh God, for every parent of students who are sending them to school. Father, I know what it's like to be a parent. You got to go to work. You got to keep your child. You got to pay child care. But I pray now in the name of Jesus, you be gyro. Be gyro. Be provider. Let them know that if you let them have that child, you'll give them child care. God is taking care of them as well. I thank you, God, that God, our teachers will be safe. I pray for our law enforcement, oh God. Continue to watch them on this national law enforcement appreciation day, God. We thank you for great policemen, for great firemen. We thank you for great EMT officers, oh God. We say, God, bless them, oh God. Keep them, oh God. They bear not the sword in vain. We lift up Minister Bramer, Minister Brother Quint McGraw. We call him minister even now, oh God. We lift up Deacon uh, uh, Francis Capri now in the name of Jesus. We say, God, keep them from all hurt, harm, and danger. Bless those who work in the prison system, oh God. I pray, God, you keep them, oh God, from all hurt, harm, and danger. In the name of Jesus. Watch over them, oh God. Keep them from all hurt, harm, and danger. We bind that spirit of depression that seems to come upon them, oh God. Hallelujah. Lose freedom and joy in their life. Father, we pray for those who need that divine miracle in their body. I continue to lift up, oh God, our own minister Mike, his lovely bride, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you are able to do. We lift up Sister Faye Evans in Pensacola, Florida right now. Father, we come against that aneurysm, oh God. We say now, God, stop the flow of the blood. Let there be no damage, oh God. I pray that to God, the doctor's hands, as they prepare to do surgery even now, oh God, that, Father God, you would lead them and guide them, and God, she will testify. I might have lost my hair, but I didn't lose my life. I thank you now, oh God, that you're doing it for your glory and your honor. Father, it's your breath in our lungs. Help us to be mindful of that. Without you touching our lungs, we can't breathe, so we pour it out to you only. In Jesus' great and majestic name we do pray. Will you put your hands together and give God a great praise one more time and you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you so much for your patience today. I really still feel it in my soul. I want you to know you can be free. You can be released in the Holy Ghost. That service does not follow a format. We follow the flow of the Holy Ghost. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. They say where a preacher is, there's liberty. They say where a praise team is, there's liberty. They say where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. I'm grateful for the preacher. I'm grateful for the praise team. But can I tell you something? None of that is anything if there's no spirit there. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor say, it's going to take the Holy Ghost. I don't know who needed that, but I'm going to let you know something. You better not get too pretty. You better not get too proud to think that you're going to make without the Holy Ghost. It's not by might. It's not by power, but by the spirit of the Lord. And I'm unashamedly Pentecostal. I'm unashamedly one who believes that God is still doing great and mighty things. Listen, this morning, if you're visiting with us for the first time, you don't mind standing just so we can acknowledge all our first-time visitors. I think everybody, hey, amen. God bless you, young fella. God bless you. Let's make sure we get them a little visitor's card. If you don't mind, tell us your name and where you're from. Hey, man, thank you so much for being here with us. Let's give them a good hand. Amen. Nice to have a young brother with us. Listen, thank you so much. We could be of any spiritual help and service to you. Don't you hesitate to let us know. Listen, we are in the month of January. Again, all January birthdays. If you yeah, every birthday to you, all the January birthday. Lord have mercy. All the birthday cute, not the birthday baby. Look, baby have birthday. Lord, all the babies having birthdays. Look at him. Bless you. Are there any other wedding anniversaries this month? I know we had, I think we had. 
Okay. All right, then. To those of you at home, if it's your wedding anniversary, go get your wife, get your husband, go kiss in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, just a few announcements tonight. We will be back here for Fresh Fire Service, 6 p.m. Again, we do honor the house rules of wearing our masks and social distance. We do our best to be obedient to the Lord. So join us tonight at 6. If you have water that you want blessed or oil you want blessed, bring it again tonight, and we will bless it. Tomorrow night, men, we will be doing our Zoom meetup. <coughs> at 7 p.m., and so we are looking forward to seeing all of you on the Zoom. Brother Quint has been doing a phenomenal job. And listen, to our uh, online family, if you want to be a part of this, just let us know. We'll send that link to you. It is open to all of our friends and brothers who are part or just followers of Radiant. We want you to be a part of that from 7 to 8. We don't hold you long. We come on in. We have a good time. And we're looking to meet uh, live again. Uh, but as you know, with all that's going on, we just have not. So we want to uh, definitely utilize Zoom until the Lord allows us to get back together. On Tuesday night, we want you to be aware to all of our parents. Not only uh, do we do children's church every Sunday. Matter of fact, if you have a child in here, uh, what's the age limits against sweetheart? They're a little baby. You can send them over to your children's church. There you go. There you go. You, when, you, when you call, if you call them maturing, you just send them over to children's church. That'll be that'll be good for us. Three to ten, so send them, send them over to Children's Church this morning. Sister Quinnage is over there doing a phenomenal job. Parents, let me just say to you, if you would, would you continue to let her know how much her ministry is helping us and helping you so that you can worship. Let's get your hands together for the Lord. <coughs> but we also do it online from 6 to 6.50 every Tuesday. Again, this is another way our children are utilizing Zoom for a lot of different things. Let's use it for the kingdom of God. So from 6 to 6.50, we're on. And then... This week, young adult, 18 and up, your Bible study starts at 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Sister Tina and the team are going to be with you. It's going to be a powerful time. And again, this is for not only our young adult, but if you're in college, this is something, one thing about Zoom. You don't have to be physically here. You can see it from your campus, and uh, we would love for you to be a part of that. The bishop does not attend that one every now and then. I may poke my head in, but listen, that is your Bible study. It gives you a chance to, to express and learn. And I know that you have some capable teachers. Adults, we meet every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And we are grateful for that. Listen, next week, we will be participating in the MLK Parade on Saturday. Oh, this Saturday. Am I saying that right? Saturday lineup is at St. Ambrose uh, Catholic Church at 830. If you have not picked up a radiant shirt, please purchase one. And let us support that event. And then as well, we want you to be aware of our State Prayer and Praise Conference the 20th through the 22nd in Fort Pierce. Listen, there is a registration fee. If you're interested in going, I'll definitely get with you on that. The reason we're doing that is because you see the Omicron uh, variant is out, and we're trying to make sure we have a better uh, control of the room. But if you would help us by getting that information to us, we will make sure that if you're interested in going, we will bless you. The other announcement that we want to make <coughs> is the fourth Sunday. Fourth Sunday night will be our last night of Fresh Fire. We're now doing it with the district. We call the district together. We will be here. So we're asking you. As you know, we always close out our time of fresh fire and all white. The district will be with us on that Sunday, and we're looking for a great time with the Lord. So be prepared to be a blessing and to be with the district on the fourth Sunday. Listen, let me put this on your calendar now. Put it on your calendar. Help people save the date. We are doing our best to bring the gathering back in 2022. And we have set that date for the gathering, and that date is... If I'm saying this right, March 3rd and 4th, it will be March 3rd and 4th will be at Cathedral. I promise you, if God don't change nothing, y'all want to be. Y'all know I always bring people who I believe uh, we kind of the gatekeepers to the city. But we have two powerful preachers who will be there with us. Uh, Runzel Pretlow will be with us on Thursday night. And then uh, Superintendent Anthony Gilliard, if you were at the state convention, he will be with us on Friday night. Antoine Cook will be with us as well. So we're just looking for a great time. And um, I just ask you to be in prayer for that meeting. The last thing that I want to share with you to those who may be watching. At the first part of the year, we do something known as the first fruit giving. It is a time of giving up and above our tithe and offering. We would ask you to be mindful to receive an envelope. Thank you, Sister Would you can bring me that envelope and even those last announcements. Yeah, I forgot a little announcement. If you receive a, a special envelope, I want you to take this home for the next few days, next few weeks maybe and pray. Say, Lord, what would you have me to give up and above? You know, Sunday we were talking about the ability to have 
favor and finances. I do believe that some of you are a gift away from your divine miracle. I want to be very clear. We don't give to get God to give. We give because of all the things he's already given. And every now and then you need to just stop. And old folks say, count your many blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings and see what God is doing. He deserves more than 10%. He deserves more than 50%. It's his breath in our lungs. And so I challenge you to get a gift. People have asked me, Bishop, what would we have us do? You know, listen, I challenge you. We always do a day salary, a week salary, a month salary, maybe up to a year salary. If that's making you nervous, I'm going to give you a number the Holy Ghost put down to me. So listen, everyone who can, $220. The Spirit of the Lord has been just dealing with me with 22 He said, listen, I'm going to bring you into double agreement, the double abundance. And so if you feel inclined, we always pray over these gifts. These gifts will be received even today at the end of service. We want you to be aware of that. Last thing, I want to be just thankful again to Mother Benefield and to those who help us uh, service our schools. We want you to know, and those watching us, that we try our best to sponsor and do something for every school in District 2. This is the district we in. Many of our children attend these schools, but we touch all schools in Deerfield, but especially District 2. And we received another letter from Tedder uh, saying they are so thankful for the generous donation of school supplies to their students. And so let's be a blessing to them. I'm asking you as your bishop and that you consider uh, being a volunteer once things kind of free up to let them know that we're concerned about our children and we're concerned about our community. And then last but not least, there's an event going to be held on the 19th of January. It's called the Community Gathering of Deerfield Healthy Students. It's going to be held at the Highlands Community Center in Pompano Beach. And so if you're interested in that, would you please go and uh, register? We'll have this information out for you so that you can help us to continue to be a part of the community uh, center. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you so much. Listen, we're also at this time of the year where many of you will be getting your end of the year giving. Uh, Sister Beasley will be sending out a link next week. Uh, please, please, if you are a cash app giver, please make sure that you properly donate, uh, note your name in the memo. We want to make sure that you get proper credit for that. And so she will be sending out that link. Uh, if you would do that, that would be so wonderful for us. Listen, I'm out of your way. I thank you for your time. Bishop. Thank you for your prayers this week. As we know, last week I didn't have a voice. This week I have a voice and I have the victory. Amen. In Jesus' name. The praise team is going to come and I'm coming back with our word for today. Let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Y'all know. My bishop, he's so wonderful. Ain't he just a wonderful man of God? But you know, he, he's serious. When he tell y'all, we get them random texts. He say, hey, add this to your rep driver ride, and I heard this. He just really be believing. He believed for it. But he, I mean, he have no, he has no doubt that you know we can do it. And so, pray our strength in the Lord. But we give God honor and glory. We ready our hearts for the word. We are in this season. We are believing for it. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. say this mountain can be moved. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. We've heard that there's no way We've heard the times will never change. They haven't seen what you can do. There is power in your name. So much power in your
Come on, put those hands together. Come on, put those hands together. We believe for it this morning, oh God. We believe for it today, oh God. I don't know what you need to believe God for. I want to give you another lesson. I've taught you this, but I need us to understand why I'm taking my time this month. I need you to understand faith is not just believing. Faith is proper believing in the right thing. I can believe I'm Michael Jordan. My belief ain't faulty. My body is. So I need you to understand, I don't put my belief in this body. I put my faith in the God who's above everybody. He can do anything but fail. Look over to me and say, he can do anything but fail. Say, trust God. Not your feelings, trust God. Not your flesh, trust God. And sometimes believing means you must wait on the Lord. Don't mean God ain't working when you wait. But sometimes you just got to wait on the Lord. And the Bible says, and be of good courage. <laughs> he will strengthen that heart. Father, you pull that song to me. Maybe just for this day. I feel you're pushing in my soul even now. A place of my emotions, my my soul is starting to line up with my spirit now, God. Somebody needs to believe again. Somebody told them wrong and they believed it to be right. Somebody told them a lie and they believed it to be true. But I pray this morning by the power of the Holy Ghost, illuminate, oh now, oh God, reveal that that word is not from you and it is not for them pray now, oh God, that you would revive them, refresh them. And Father, as you revive and refresh and renew, cause them to run on the sea where the end will be. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' great and majestic name of the Lord, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you so much. Listen, we have a few people that are coming in. This has been a great Sunday. And again, if you have children's church, if you have children, we don't have a problem. If your children would, don't mind going, take them over to children's church. Now, if you got a child that might not like children's church, you may have to go to children's church with them. But uh, we would be more than happy to take them to children's church. Okay. Let me uh, again implore you to see if you will be able to make it back tonight at 6. We don't labor the time but I do believe that amidst all that's going on we need to make a public declaration public affirmation that it's good for the brethren and sisters to get together and I realize there are those of you who may have health conditions we understand so we're not but for those of us who are healthy enough to get together let's come together tonight at 6 and we will bless the Lord I have been pushed in my spirit Take the time for the next few weeks. It may not be a Hooper sermon that I want it to be, but I'm concerned at the practices that are being displayed by people who call themselves Christian. I want to be clear. I, I have no, I have no authority as it relates to regulate your life beyond those who are members of Radiant Living Worship Center. However. I am identified with a group of people that the world seems to also identify me with. And that is Christians. And so one of the things that I want to help us do is to understand that there comes a responsibility with that label. Now, if you don't want to be saved, just say I'm not saved. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Jesus said, to the church in, 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 in Revelation, he said, listen, I'd rather just be hot or cold, but don't be lukewarm. He said, you know, matter of fact, lukewarm water really is good for nothing. It's, that's where bacteria starts to come in. See? He said, I'd rather just be hot. If you don't like me, I'm cool. But if you like me, I need you to be hot. 
I, I need there to be some clear delineation. I want to be clear. I want you to write this down. I have been delivered to be on display. Now, I, I brought y'all this a few years, it might be last year, but the Holy Ghost is pulling me back around. I said, spend some time with this. I'm going to tell you, if you don't want to be looked at, you don't want to be saved. I'm going to take you somewhere in a little bit. If you don't want to be seen, you don't want to be saved. Salvation by its very nature puts you on display. Now, this is critical. If you ever get that part down, the next part then helps you. Though I'm on display, I don't have to follow the demands of the world. The world puts demands on Christians that are just worldly. So let me give you one they put, put on me. Well, I, I, they put, put, put on my children probably before they put it on me. My children, because they were preachers' children, couldn't do stuff children could do. Now, somehow, my children had to understand, though. Because you are a preacher's child, you are on display. But I will not let the demands of the world destroy your destiny. So my children played soccer. My children were cheerleaders. My children were in the band. And when they played band music, every bit of the music wasn't Jesus' music. I remember when Imani did the first cheerleading competition. Me and Jesus, I said, come here, come here, come here, come over here, come over here, come over here, come over here. I'm going to let you cheer. But uh, you, I went to the choreographer let me tell you something. I don't know what music you're playing, but I, I need to make sure whatever you, Luke can't be part of that playlist. I said, I know Luke know how to drop that down, but Luke can't, now my baby can't dance on that. That wasn't the world's demand. That was me saying, baby, you're going to be on display. And what I was trying to instill in my children, what I hope to share with you in a few minutes here, is that if we can get over the foolish demands of the world, you will have a delight in the Lord. You can say to the world, look at me. I ain't mad at you looking at me. Because when you look at me, you see the great God working on me. So Sister Tracy is going to help me read today. I want to show you something. I want to take you something because I need to deal with this first. Go to Matthew chapter 7 because I need to unpack this again and I'll come back to Proverbs. But I got, I got to help us with something that we have again, we mistalked. And the world has now told us a definition that is not biblical. So Tracy, go to uh, Matthew chapter 7 verse number 1. Matthew 7 verse number 1. Read it for me. Matthew, Matthew 7 and 1 says... Judge not that ye be not judged. Uh -huh. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Stop right there. So most people stop at verse 1 but never read yeah. verse 2. Correct. Because he didn't say you don't judge. He said don't judge wrongly. Correct. That's what he's, he's finna lay down the law. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. See what you see. See what you see. And if you see something... Or you don't, you don't see something, say something. Mm -hmm. He said, now let's be clear. Though. Don't make it your business to be a private investigator if you don't want nobody private investigating you. Exactly. <laughs> I tell people, I don't mind looking in your trash, but I got trash out there one day you may look into. Exactly. Look at your neighbors and neighbor. Neighbor. They're looking at you too. At you too. <laughs> he says, because here's the truth. When you start helping people what you see, you bet want to be sensitive in how you serve them. Yeah. He said, because the same measure you come at them, mm -hmm. they're going to come at you. You know why people really don't bother me? Because <laughs> I don't bother nobody. And when I bother people about stuff they're doing, I bother them realize that one day I might be doing something and you know they may have to bother me too. That's, that's, that's basic Bible. I don't say I'm going to get away with it, but when they come at me, they can say, I can say, hey, 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 I didn't come at you that way. Listen, folks, y'all bishop, can I just be transparent for a few moments here? I see a lot of stuff that I don't say nothing about. I have been places, random places, random safe places that people 
are doing some unsavory things. Okay. Hey, I've been to restaurants, and there are. I don't, I don't have no bit. I, I, I just go to get my steak. I tell you, I'm going to get my steak and my potato. But if I go to wash my hands, <laughs> you never know, did I see somebody eating a steak? And I go, hmm, I don't know if that, if that two of these things don't belong together. Yeah. But I, I stay in my Holy Ghost myself. I'm saying, hey, maybe it's a co-worker. <laughs> maybe it's, maybe it's a, but I can, I can tell by the look in the eye when it come back to me. It's almost like, oh, Lord. Oh, my God, he's coming. Yeah. And you know what I do? I look him in the eye and say, go wash my hands. I eat my food. And on the way, I say, see y'all later. <laughs> and I had one person come to me and say, oh, man, you good. You had me dead to rights. Why you didn't say something? I said, well, first off, you look like you were just starting your meal. I can already tell you ain't going to eat that meal good once you saw me anyway. I had already, I had already ruined that meal. That, that meal was done. I didn't need to say nothing else. It wasn't going to sit on your stomach good anyhow. I almost went to ask you, can I just take yours home with me? I said, but well, can I talk to you, Phil? I said, my job in seeing you is also see you get back to God. And I said, hopefully one day if you catch me in a situation, you remember how I caught you. I said, that don't mean we ain't going to deal with what we saw. But to this day, y'all don't know who I saw. And you don't need to know. So they know I saw them. I know I saw them. Jesus know we saw each other. And guess what? We don't, listen, that's all. Because here's the truth of the matter. The verse says here, with the judgment you throw it out, yeah. it comes back to you. you. Will be I'm going to help you with something. See, I'm going to help you. I promise you I'm trying to get it somewhere. I'm concerned that now we have a world that don't want you to see nothing. Right. See, you, you, can't, you can't ask me not to see what I see. And then tell me I can't say. Now, I will tell you I will be careful how I say it to you. But I see what I see. Keep moving straight. Let's go to verse number two. Verse three, no, no, yeah. Yeah, Number three. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own let me, eye? Let me stop right here. So that, well, judgment also denotes that before I start bothering you, I may need to inspect me. So I'm, I'm going to get real transparent. Bishop Pell has some issues. I like what I like. Can I, can, me and Lady Pell have been having this discussion for a few weeks. I'll bring you to the House of Pell for a second. I don't know if I'm having a midlife crisis, but I get on these binges of stuff I just like. So I, I've been in this thing where I like Funko Pops. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just yeah, you don't want to. They bobbleheads. They're nothing. My wife thinks they're crazy. And I just started to collect them. I like them. I just like them. And uh, Lady Pell and I have a disagreement on what's the weekly allowance of Funko Pops. Matter of fact, she's really upset about what's the household limit in the house of Funko Pops. So I didn't get no Funko Pops. So if y'all come to my house, I got a little room now. I, I just got a picture. It's a great picture. It's one of my favorite pictures now. I just put it on the wall, but I had, to, I had to kind of finesse it in the house. I had to, I had to get it in there and uh, let it marinate a few weeks. And uh, I put it on the wall. And last week, Lady Pell walked through. She saw that picture. <laughs> the sister girl came out to the front room and said, come on, let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. Let me talk to you, let me talk to you really good. She said, now, what we're not going to do, what we're not going to do, we're not going to be hanging pictures, buying Funko Pops. You, you've done for a while. Now, I'm just being honest with you. Pell, in my Pell self, said, I'm a grown man. Last time I checked, last time I checked, this roof, this roof. Water, air, lights. Last name is Pell on all them bills. I 
I then began to rise up. And the reason I bring that to you is because I was then talking to a young fella about how he's treating his wife. And then I'm trying to get on him about how he's treating his wife, you know, my court stenographer here. <laughs> Reminded me, you better be careful bothering that speck in his eye. Uh -huh. Mr. I got a picture on the wall. I got about 14,000 Funko Pops. You and the Amazon man on the first name basis. He telling me I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> so when I start dealing with people in their life, I just say, I got issues in my life. And I'm not going to start pulling a speck out of your eye when I got some junk. Look at your neighbor. You still got some matters in your eyes. Yeah, matters, yeah. That's what we call it. That's what we call it, right? Matters. But the point says, you have an obligation. You have an obligation to not let someone be deceived into believing what they're living is real when it's not. Attending church does not make you saved. That's it, that's it. Applying the principle of God beyond the church is what makes you saved. Yes. I don't know if anybody in here is saved until I see you live out there. That's so good. Shouting in here just let me know the Lord touched you here. Yeah. Living out there let me know he transformed you yeah. out there. Yeah. Stay with me, stay with me. Tracy walked down a little bit. He said, listen, uh, Because I'm going to stay with the judgment. Go down to verse number five. Go to verse five. Now, Jesus said something. He just told you, remember verse, verse one said, judge not lest ye be judged. What did he start off verse five with? Hypocrite. Hold on. Wait a minute. 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 Now, Jesus, you just told me not to judge, and you done called somebody a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Call them like you see them. That ain't judgment. That's assessment. Forrest Gump is right. Stupid is what stupid does. Ain't no, and nobody trying to be mad at you. Nobody trying to beat you down. But when you do the same dumb thing over and over again, you let me know you might be just dumb. Oh, yeah. Hypocrite. He said, hypocrite. hypocrite. Jesus said, I I'm not telling you not to be one to always be high minded. He said, but I'm not all t telling you, don't let stuff get by. You're a hypocrite. You got a mask on. That's what a hypocrite was back in biblical days, Greek days. Um, a, a play would have a guy would stand with two masks in his head. Mm -hmm. One smiling face, one smiling face. Mm -hmm. If he was the protagonist mm -hmm. or the winner, he would have the smiling face on. If he was the antagonist or the meanest guy, he'd have a smiley, the, the sad face on. Right. And so he would be going. And for some of you, God said, I can't get worship out of you because you're holding on to your mask. Jesus. You can't lift holy hands when you're holding mask in your hand. He says, but let's be clear. You hypocrites. Hypocrite. Let's first, be real. Do something. First, remove the plank from your own eye. Anthony Pell stands here as your bishop and tell you, I am not telling anyone something that I'm not trying to live myself. Exactly. Every day, I'm pulling a bit. Every day, I got to spin a cup. Great day. Yeah. Great day. Yeah. Great. And I'm, I'm removing splinters because I want to see clearly. And I want to be able to help you see clearly. Keep reading, Miss Tracy. From your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's then eye. Let's look at what Jesus do here on verse 6. Oh, it's wow. just, that's just even far worse. Do uh, not do give what? what is holy to the dog. So now he just told you don't judge, but then he, he went and called somebody a hypocrite. And guess what he just called him in this verse? A dog. Don't get, do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor let cast me, your let me, be, let, me, let me be clear, because I'm going to pull this for the problem in a second. Some of y'all run with flea people. God, I, I'm trying to say this the best way I know to say it. All they do is itch and scratch. And you can't expect to get holy out of itching and scratching people. Last week, I tried to help some of y'all. God knows this. It will not lift off of me. Some of you run with people who have no intention of trying to live for God. Know how They think Jesus is a hustle maker. They think this is a game. They think this is some kind of put on. And somehow you have been allured into their world, and you are now living, 
trying to give something holy to somebody who don't want to be holy. Keep reading, Sister Tracy. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. And God knows some of us are literally licking the wounds of trying to walk with people who don't want to walk with God. The verse says they will turn on you and rend you to pieces. See, that took you back to demands. That's how the world does the church. They'll make a demand for us, and we, we done tried to coddle some folks, and now they turn against us, and they don't, listen, dumb dogs live, dumb hogs live, and you bleed to death. Yeah. I'll close with this, Sister Tracy. Go to verse number 16. Go to verse 16 again. I'm far beyond my time. I'll, I'll pick this up next week. Okay. 16 says, you will know them by their fruits. See, now, once again, the whole point is, y'all keep saying, don't judge. He don't call somebody a hypocrite. Yeah. He don't call somebody a dog. Mm -hmm. And then he said, you shall what? Know them by you shall their what? fruits. Know them. He said, there should be no confusion because you shall know them by their fruits. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a difference between a nut and a fruit, y'all. That's all I'm going to say. Some of y'all should have clear discernment. The reason I started last week, some of us have lost the ability to discern because we've lost the desire to be on display. When you lose the, lose the ability to discern, you forget that you're on display. Lady Pell, come stand beside me right quick. Whether I like it or not, whether she like it or not, probably in her case. <laughs> I know that's a day she just wanted to just, well, I could just beat him in the head with a bucket for the bother. I know that's a day, well, I, listen, I, I know, I know my, my wife got the Holy Ghost for real, y'all. Because I know that's some days I, I bet she wanted just to, ooh. You know, she ain't really learned how to fry fish and, and chicken real good, so I'm so grateful. So Bob said, I'm not saying she's not a good cook, I'm just saying, because, you know, she can be, I'm not saying like that. I'm saying that you ain't putting no hot grease on me. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, to the hot grease, and she don't put no hot grease on me. Let me use that right there. So let's use that right there. I am prone, y'all have seen, I am prone to doing a few of those like that. My intentions gets messed up in my uh, presentation. So Lady Pell has a situation. She can say, oh, no, he didn't. Or she can say, yes, he did. I'm going to correct him and stay connected to him. Yeah. Which means I have to be open enough to realize that what she saw, yeah. she saw. Yeah. What she just heard, I might not have meant it that way, but enough of y'all heard it that way to help me let me know, well, I shouldn't have said it that way. Now, there's no need of me sitting around there going, and you don't need to be checking me. I, I ain't bring you on this stage to check me. We on display. Yeah. And though we on display, guess what? If she needs to check me to help our display, I may have to be checked. Yeah. You know what she did? She, she, didn't, she didn't get me bad. She, she, <laughs> she good. I saw the sister out there ready. I saw some of y'all ready to go to the purse for. <laughs> she simply said, fix it up, honey. And because she helped me take the speck out of my eye, I was able to see what she wanted me to see. I need that because guess what? I know that when I'm standing with her, I'm always on display. And I told her, baby, if I'm not prepared to be on display, then I, won't, I don't need to be there. Because whether I'm the bishop or not, guess what? We on display. Yeah. The moment she got saved, she on display. The moment I got saved, I'm on display. And together we are on display. And guess what? We need to help one another. Yeah. Produce the fruit mm -hmm. to show people God. Thank you, sweetie. I just wanted to have you come up and stand next to me. <laughs> That's my baby doll, y'all. So, 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 so
Verse 16. Verse 16 says, you will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from the thistles? See, I'm trying to get y'all to understand. God is saying, if you lose discernment, you'll never have discovery. Mm. You can't gather certain things when you see there is no evidence that it was ever there. Right. You can't gather grapes among thorns. You're getting stuck because it ain't there. He says, you can't do without strength. You can't get um, figs from thistles. You can't get that from that. And what God is trying to tell you, I'm not telling you, I'm telling you, open your eyes. I'm not telling you to be a mean judge. I'm not telling you to be a random judge. But I'm telling you, stop using this verse and say, you can't tell me nothing. You ain't nothing. Jesus. You have nothing. And it's, I need to come to the realization, I'm going to get nothing. Nothing from nothing leaves what? Billy Preston told y'all that. You gotta have something if you're gonna be with me. I told y'all we go to Proverbs, Proverbs chapter two, chapter Tracy. Brother Mike, come on, let's play some soft music. We're done for the day. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. We're on display. We're on display. So my last three points for this is first off. Say, neighbor, I must learn these principles. Everyone in this room is a product of their principles. Wrong principles produce a wrong product. Look at your neighbor and say, practices are the manifestation of my accepted principles. If I disrespect Lady Pell, that is a principle that I, that first of all, I just don't value her. The disrespect is the practice of me and put that principle into practice. Last week I told you that one of the things I'm trying to do for the next few weeks, I'm really trying to get our minds set up that I've got to be willing to accept the principles of God and I may have to rechange and redefine my practices. Just trace, read verse number one in Proverbs chapter two. Proverbs two, verse one, the value of wisdom. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver, and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Let me tell you something, folks. I mean this with all my heart. This verse of scripture is becoming and should become a seminal verse in this time of fasting. Lord, help me understand the fear of the Lord. Folks, I mean this with all my heart. Until your worship gets right, your life will never get right. And he said, not only the fear of the Lord, but he said, Lord, will you help me to understand the knowledge of God? I want to know him, the power of his resurrection. And then what happens when I know him, Sister Tracy? Guess what? Verse 6 says what? For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Y'all know, Sister Pell, one of her favorite verses, if a man lack wisdom. Let him ask of God. Let him ask of God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you don't have to be silly. See, and, and, and let me tell you, that's what God starts with. He don't call you stupid. He starts with you just being silly. Silly means naive. God knows that everybody, there's just some things I don't know and I'm naive about. But God said, I'll give you wisdom that you're not naive. If you don't come past silly, then you start walking into the realm of stupid. Because when you know better, guess what you should do? Keep reading verse 7, Sister Tracy. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. So folks, I'm going to tell you something. I, I've had to tell people, I had to help people. That's why I'm not debating with people about masks and different things. Because I've got the stored up wisdom of the Lord. I, I'm, I'm doing with the wise thing, not the worldly thing. I'm not debating with people about, should I do this? Or this? Well, Lord, what you say? And can I tell you again, I'm not going to let the man to make the world make a demand on me that's going to mess up my display. Keep reading, Sister Tracy. He 
He guards the path, verse 8, he guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of his saints. God, I love you. Yes, Lord. Keep going. Verse 9, then you will understand righteousness right and there. justice. Folks, principles lead to practices. Practices should always lead to someone seeing that you are maturing. Someone would say that, that other, if I had another P, I'd say you're being perfected. Your practices show where you are on a performance scale. Yes. That at some point, you want to progress, check your principles. That's good. You want to progress, change your practices. Because when you have the right principles and the right practices, guess what? You naturally progress. True. People say, I see something different in you. You know what they say? I see the progression in you. And have you ever noticed when you go on a diet and you don't tell nobody? They, yeah. Listen, you picked up the principle, I'm going to eat different. You change the practice of how you eat, and people say, child, you're losing weight. Can I tell you what the world is looking at the church saying? Y'all ain't losing no weight. Y'all looking just about as out of shape as we are. You know why? Because we have adapted the world's principles. We have adapted the world's practices, and now the church ain't making no progress. God, help. Keep reading, Sister Tracy, I'm done. Then verse you will understand righteousness and justice. And look what wisdom and will do. Go verse 10. Verse 10, when wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul. When, it, when, when wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, I don't care what the world say. I don't care. Listen, folks, somebody may be watching me, and I've, I've had people ridicule me about being saved, about being a pastor, about being a preacher, about being a one-woman man. Y'all are idiots. Come on. Stupid as the day is long. When wisdom enters into your heart, God, I feel it right there. And knowledge is pleasant to your soul. What, what, does, what, what, what would it do, Tracy? Discretion will preserve you. Come here, Minister Bramer. I want y'all to know, he is a policeman. Come on up here. And put glass on. understanding will keep you. Should have had him come. Brother McGurk, you coming too, because you're a police officer too. Come here, both of y'all come on up here. Right now, both of these men still have authority yeah. to arrest you. Now, they may not choose to exercise that authority. And this is what I love about God. When you let wisdom get into your heart, come stand on this side. You stay on this side. He says, and you begin to adopt the practices of God. Mm -hmm. And you change the principles of God. You change the practices to line up with God. Mm -hmm. God does something. Mm -hmm. He sends discretion. Discretion, yeah, will preserve you. So if I decide to go stupid over here, he's like, what's wrong? Understanding will keep you. God said, I'll put up guardrails for your life. God, God. Goodness and mercy may follow me, but discretion mm -hmm. but preserves me. Mm -hmm. And I'm, the reason I need to be preserved because we live in a world that is perverted. Yes. Discretion starts to see down the line before I see it. And comes back to me and says, listen, that principle they're practicing over there, that's not for you. That's not. So that's what, don't even get involved yourself with that practice. There's certain things, thank y'all gentlemen. I'm, I'm done. God, I mean, I, I didn't mean to go this far. But in this fast, I'm telling you that God is trying to tell some of you, you can't change the world, but don't you let the world change you. So take for a few minutes to start looking around and say, am I trying to get grapes out of fists, out of thorns? How am I getting stuff instead of getting juice? Because there ain't no grapes there. Why am I not getting production out of this place? Because somewhere down the line, you have let the world tell you, you don't judge me. Everything ain't holy. Everything ain't acceptable. Everyone must be born again. We're not going to run you away if you come to rating, but let me be clear. So let me say it unequivocally clear. I say it with love in my heart. There is no same-sex loving over here. Listen, you may battle same-sex attraction over here. Because this is Bishop battle this, 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 this big bean woman. I'm not mad at nobody who loved the wrong person because I love liquor like I love the wrong person. Yeah. That means I had to get out of this eye. Yeah. 
The same, the same devil that had, had somebody bound over there had me bound over there. Yeah. But you ain't going to make me tell, oh, that, that's the same type of love. That ain't the same type of love. Right. Okay, let me go one step further. Okay, let me see. Go ahead. If you got a wife or a husband, yeah. you don't need to be in the face of somebody else's wife or husband. Let me say it on, on 10 one more time. I'm not on no Bumble. I'm not on no Cupid. I'm not on no kind of site looking at nobody, looking for somebody, because I got somebody. Let me even go one step further. If you single, ready to mingle, I don't counsel you. Because I don't need you infatuated with me because you can't have me. I don't want to get it in your head. Oh, I, I think he liked me. The yes, devil is a liar. liar. Yes, he is. I can, I can put you in contact with somebody who can help you. But again, see, that's the practice and the principle of the world. Well, you know, we, you just, you, Bishop, you just a little too harsh. You, you, you know, you, 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 you just, you just, you no, know, no, 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 no. Listen, I come home at night. That's right. I drive a lot of places, but when I get myself off 95 or on the turnpike, I come to 10647. Right there. They don't need me. Why? Because I know I'm on display. And the world is looking at the church at this hour and saying, how in the world? And I'm going to say this, and I need y'all to hear me. There's no way Pentecost, we better shut the Pentecostal church down. If God got power to raise you from the dead and can't help you live a saved life, something wrong. We believe he can work signs and miracles and he can't work a sign or miracle in your life, something wrong. So I take you back to a verse. I'm not judging. And I'm willing to say, we're going to all get our eyes checked over here. Yes. But what you're not going to get me to do is tell you that what you're doing is saved. It's right. no. What you're doing is sanctified. No, it's wrong. What you're doing is Holy Ghost field. Because a tree is known by its fruit. Right. And look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. A, good a good tree don't produce rotten fruit. Stand with me all over the house. I'm troubled. And maybe in this time of fasting, I'm being even my own self refined. I'm being somewhat defined. I literally get calls from people all across the country. My wife laughs at me. They, my kids laugh at me. When my phone broke, they said, are you, are you going to make it without a day without your phone? I really almost did make it without my phone. But a few weeks ago, a young man called me. He asked me these words. I heard the sincerity in his heart. He says, Bishop, are you happy to really be saved? And I said, yeah. He says, do you think you've missed life because you're saved? I said, I said no. I said, young man, let me just be candid. I said, I don't know what you're looking for. But I said, I can tell you this. I have everything I need in the Lord. And so, again, I want to say to my young people, I want to say to anyone, listen, I have been on vacations. I done been on boats. I done swim in a swimming pool. I done put on swimming trunks at a beach. I done watch movies on my TV. I done watch movies in the theater. I done kissed my, my wife in front of people. Like y'all kiss people. Wherever your mind went, yeah, that's where mine was, right there, okay. But I had to come to a decision one day that the principles of this world were not going to make my life productive. There's a way that seems right to man, but when you get to the end, it's nothing but death and destruction. For me, it was alcohol. I stand here every time. To a lot of people, I was successful. My personality has always been gregarious. 
So if you know if I got with the liquor with me, we was having a good time. But I'm so glad the Lord delivered me. I think about the times I could have killed somebody, Mother Benefield. I was good and drunk. I don't know how I got from the bar to the room, but I'm so grateful for the grace of God. Can I be honest? Some young lady right now needs to be so thankful that I didn't get with her in that state of my life. I'm grateful that the Lord delivered me and saved me from Millicent. I could have done something with a young lady that could have ruined my destiny. And I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know why the Spirit of the Lord has even pushed me here, but I'm here today to tell you God is a He's an addiction breaker. He is an addiction breaker. And he is a mind regulator. When God freed me from liquor, he saved my soul. He saved my soul. My emotions said, God, I can't have liquor like that no more. My spirit man might have been coming up, but my soul man for the first time woke up and said, liquor going to make you lose your life. And I don't know who in your soul, in here now, your soul is about to cause you to lose your life. But I hear the Lord say, change your principles. Change your practices and watch your life progress. The day I changed my principles, the day I changed my practices, I saw a pretty young lady. And then I had to make sure I didn't bring no foolish principles into that relationship. And I changed my principles. Changed my practices. And God has been progressing us. Ever since. Today I want you to know God wants to progress your life. And I don't know where you are, but if you feel your life is at a standstill, why don't you come and let me pray for you? I feel this in the shifting of my soul. I want you to know God is truly able to deliver you. God is truly able to help you. This man standing here is a young man who the Lord had to come and save, sweetly save, and I promise you, the thing I love about my God it's whom the son sets free is free indeed. Somebody help him with that baby. If I felt Jesus today, I felt him today, I promise you. I know the God we serve is a life changer. I need some of y'all praying now. God pushed you on this place for deliverance as well. Many times God did because he did those miracles very openly to show his power. Daughters, I don't know y'all. Under the mask, I can't see who you are. But I hear the Lord said, I see the brokenness. And I'm here to remind you of something that this man has lived from the day I got saved to if God free you, I promise you, he'll break every chain, every shackle. And you'll find that he may not be able to change the people you're leaving, but I hear the Lord say, you can leave and live. Father, right now, touch, oh God. Shun, do, do, mo, shun, de. Father, I pray you touch God and move as only you can, oh God. I pray now, oh God, that you let these young ladies know, oh God. That if they stand here publicly, oh God, that you are God who will move publicly for them. That, Father God, I don't know what the need is, oh God. I don't know what the concern is, oh God. But I know, God, you can mean it, oh God. I pray, God, that you turn their lives around. That today they've heard, oh God, that you can help them, oh God, bear good fruit, oh God. That you can help them, oh God, reflect the goodness of the Lord. And that discretion will keep them, oh God. I pray now, God, that if anything, oh God, that the enemy's even trying now to flood their minds with regret. Father, we just say, forgive us. Forgive us. Father, we have fallen short of your glory. And we all come home to you now, oh God. Touch them now, oh God, to know that you are God who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all we ask you for. In Jesus' name. Listen, I need you to lift your hands all over the house. I know we got this stuff going on. I know some of you are afraid to come. But I need you to hear the word of the Lord. Change your principles. 
change your practice. And in 2022 will be the year of a double progression. God said, I'll show you. I'll turn it around quickly for you. But you got to be willing to say, Lord, change my principles. Lord, help me to change my practices. So won't you pray this prayer and say, Lord Jesus, I recommit myself to your will, to your way, to your word. Thank you for forgiving me. Holy Ghost, will you refill me so that I may check my principles, change my practices, and make progression in my life. I believe this year will be a great year because I will yield to the power of God in Jesus' name. Now, will you just begin to give him praise? Come on, begin to give him praise. Come on, begin to give him praise. God, I ask you. Come on, pray, saints. Come on, pray, saints. Hallelujah. Come on, there's power. There is power in the name. Break every chain. Baby, I'll get their information. Get their information. Somebody help me. Come on, come on. To break every chain. To break every chain. Come on, lift your voice and say, there's power. There is power in the name of Jesus. Woo, God. There is power in the name, in the name of Jesus. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. And he'll break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every, break every chain. To break every chain. To break every. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. chain. Tonight at six o'clock, we want you to be back with us. You don't have to wear any particular clothes again. If you have water or oil, you want blessed. For those of you who are doing the envelopes, may the Lord bless you. I hope that you are adopting a new principle and showing that in your new practices. As the year moves, hopefully you'll see the progression of the Lord. Is there anyone today who may have a first fruit offering that they want to give? Hallelujah. 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 Amen. I think I've got a few. Amen. Hallelujah. Minister Bram, if you would help me with this. don't mind, just lift those offerings up once he anoints your head. Father, we don't do this out of ritual. We don't do this out of routine. We do this as a righteous acknowledgement that you are our source. As these hands are lifting up these seeds unto you, won't you just begin to wave them, wave your hand back and forth. Father, we wave these seed to you. We thank you that in the year of 22, there will be double anointing. There will be double, God, on top of whatever you have planned, oh God. And Father, we wave these seeds now, the sign to say, God, you will bless our seed. You will bless our field. You will bless our fruit. Increase and abundance is coming to us in the name of Jesus. And Father, we won't hoard it. We won't hold it, but we are lifted higher unto you. Bless all that these hands desire to do in 2022. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, if you would just put them right there on the stage. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Father, again, will you just lift your hands one more time? Lift your hands one more time. Sister, before you go, lift your hands. 
Matter of fact, I, I listen, I, I feel this. Lady Pell, will you just put your hands on Sister Shirley's shoulders? I hear the Lord saying, I am strengthening you for another level. You are well able. You have been faithful. God said you are about to see fruitful days. You are about to see the hand of God in ways you have never seen in your life. The Lord said, I put my hand upon you as my wife, Chikondo Moshe. As my wife has her hands, God said, my hand has been on you and it shall be on you. Don't you let the world's principles change your practices. I will progress you in the power of my name in Jesus' name. Receive it, daughter. Receive it. Receive it. Come here, Sister Sh uh, Shirley. Can you lay your hands on my daughter right here? Father, special grace and strength for this daughter. Father, I pray and I feel it in my spirit. Power upon power upon power. Preserving power, oh God. Progressing power, oh God. I pray now, God, she would know, oh God, that as this prayer is being made, power is being pushed into her, oh God. That, Father God, you will not only help her, but you will uphold her. Huh? In the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, we realize, oh God, that some things we don't understand. But, oh God, we do know that you work all things together for good. And I call on you, God, to manifest your word for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name. Brother Israel, just lift your hands up high. The Lord said, lift high you. Go lift your hands high you. Lift them high you. Lift them as high as you can. And the Lord said, as you lift up to me, my blessing will fall down to you. I didn't have anybody lay my hands on you because God said, I'm going to do it myself. God said, you're going to see the power and the promise of God in the land. God, I feel Jesus. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I feel the Holy Ghost. Come here, Minister Bramer. I feel the Holy Ghost. I call on you, Holy Ghost, to get there. Get there. Move there in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, I call on you to take him Woo, for your glory. Somebody got to get in Jesus. Somebody got to get in Jesus. Somebody got to get in Jesus. Come on, put those hands together. Come on, put those hands together. Come on, lift that voice like a trumpet. I feel the shifting of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to let you go. But I feel something down. I heard Tracy. I heard him. I believe everything going to be all right. Somebody lift up your hand and say, I believe that everything going to be all right. Look over at your neighbor and say, neighbor. That everything gonna be alright. Yeah! Yeah! Come on, y'all, lift your hand. I gotta let y'all. lift your hands all over this house. I don't know who you are. If you're in this room or watching me, I don't mean to be so vague in that regard. But I need to let you know I'm not a soothsayer. I'm not a fortune teller. You don't come to church to hear a word out of my mouth. You come to have the hand of the Lord be laid upon you. And so I say now receive me the power. Receive me the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive me the power not from the hand of the bishop but from the hand of the Lord. I call on you to lift up your hands. I call on you to lift up your voice and say, I receive it in the name of Jesus. Father, we release these now your people in the name of Jesus. Watch over them, oh God. As we go into this new week, oh God, we go with our eyes wide open. We say, God, do what you do. Show us what you need to show us. Make us what you need us to be. And Father, let the words of our mouth, let the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And everyone who loves the Lord said, Amen. Amen. And Amen.